Hey, what's going on guys? Rudlinel here, coming back at you with some more Python tutorials. Let's get idle started up and we can get to programming. I'm going to create a new script here, save this as a uh, file.python. Start up with a shebang line, create a new class, <coughs> get our comments going on if you want to have that sort of code block style like I do. Create your constructor, bring in the self keyword, make sure caps lock is off. We can just display. Hello world. Get some new lines in there, and then we'll test whether or not this is the correct script that we are running with. Now I can set a root object to be an instance of the base class. Now if we run this, that should be fine. Okay, cool. Now, the thing that we're talking about today is the uh, is the sorted function. <coughs> now, the sorted function, along with the uh, along with the sort function, which is uh, an attribute or at least something that you can do with uh, objects of tuples and arrays and that sort of thing, is uh, is being able to sort the array, obviously, and it, it normally would be in descending order, at least ascending order, sorry, because if you would have, if you use sorted, you can pass in an array of numbers, let's say um, 3, 10, negative 2, negative 3, negative 2, whatever, I can change it if I want to, <laughs> 1, and then uh, negative 1, that sort of thing, and that would return the, the array in the way, in the form that you wanted it to be in. It would in turn be negative 2, 1, 3, and then 10 because it would sort them in the correct order. Now you can do this with strings as well when you're working with like a uh, let's see this is and then like you could just call it a string array or that sort of thing. And you could sort this and then it would sort it in the way that it would expect it to be except in it's an alphabetical order. It would be a and then is this and that sort of thing. So yeah all it is is really just moving them, moving them into the the order that they should be in. They're sorting them. So let's try and create this on our own, though. This is, has a little bit more of an interesting algorithm or interesting logic flow. So let's try it out. Let's define a new function. Define sort. Remember, we need the self keyword because we're defining a function inside of an of an object, and we'll pass in the array that we're going to be looking through. We do need the array length because we're going to be counting and going through the uh, going through the array numerically, so array equals length of array, and that keeps it easy, and now we'll start doing our for loop. Now we need 4i in range, obviously we're going through the entire array, so we need array.length, and then once we've got that for loop set up, we're going to actually need another for loop, and this is what's going to allow us to be able to go back and forth with the array and that sort of thing. So we're going to be able to make sure that it's ordered. Sorry, that it's sorted. So for j in range, and now we're going to want to start with i or the current thing that we're working with, and then go until the end of the array. So now we've got this set up. We can test whether the array variable of i, or at least array with the index of i, whatever it is that we're looking at currently, is greater than the array variable of j, or the array at index j. So with those numbers, if, the, if one of them is greater, you're going to be able to know that you should shuffle things around. So what we do here is we create a temporary variable, and that allows us to be able to manipulate one thing to the other. You can, like, move one piece of information in a different direction and that sort of thing. Temporary becomes array with the index of i, and then array j, actually array i, sorry, becomes array j. And you guessed it, array j becomes our temporary variable. Because we've shuffled these things around a bit, we've all we've done is created it in an order that is sorted numerically. So if we break out of this loop, we can return our array. Now if we go up here, we do uh, we get ourselves a new structure, or like a list, I'm going to call it structure for now, and it's going to be just maybe negative uh, 421, negative 321, negative 300, negative 3423, that sounds about right. Negative 4, how about a 0, how about maybe 23, maybe 2365. I'm going in order myself now. Well, this is embarrassing. <laughs> Let's move these in any 
Okay, it's not all in order. I wasn't I wasn't doing that bad. Okay. Let's just do 90 here. So, okay. Let's try that. Self.structure, that's all set. So if we print out the way we would normally be able to do this, sorted, and then we just pass in self.structure. And then we can try and print out the way we've done it, which is practically the same thing with our sort function. Self.short, remember, because it's a local local function to this object. And then we can pass in our self.structure variable. Now when we run this, we have the exact same output because we're practically using that algorithm. In fact, it's very likely that we are. All we're doing is looping through the array and seeing anything that's greater than the others and moving it further and further down the list. So, yeah, that's all. <laughs> it's definitely something to be working with when you're, when you're checking out strings, though. That might be a little bit more difficult, and it's, it's worth a lot more thought. So... That's definitely on its way, though, but for now, you can enjoy this sort of algorithm, and you see how one of those functions works. One of those functions work. And, yeah, there you go. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for listening. It'd be cool if you could leave a comment, let me know what you think of the video. And uh, maybe leave a like, uh, maybe subscribe, I don't know, it's, it's all up to you. But uh, thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.